Mr. Petru, love the turtleneck, love the uh, Yule log in the background. You are really upping the game in terms of YouTube studios. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking you probably have a makeup artist coming next to, to get y'all looking good for the cameras. Um, but hey, uh, great, under, great catching up. Yep. Under your tutelage, I'm, I've come a long way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Like, guy with the scraggly beard. Yeah, that'll, that's good tu tutelage. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so how you doing? Have you, uh, you have to be feeling pretty good for yourself. Your lords, I mean, owls have, um, uh, you know, took care of business, uh, which I think they will continue to do, but you got to be feeling good about that. Yeah, I'm very happy to not have to wear all black today. And <laughs> it's always, it's always a thousand times better when your team's still in it. Yeah. yeah um, very so good. yeah, I'm, it doesn't get any better than this, like sweet 16. Yeah. Um, so let's, I'm ready to roll. All right. So let's go. Floor is yours, my friend. All right. So I wanted to I wanted to give you a few quick hitters to get us warmed up. Mm -hmm. um, and the first one is sort of the conference, how the conferences have stacked up. Uh, the UAA has one of four teams left. NESCAC has three of five left. Uh, the Sunyak has two of two. Um, which makes you wonder about whether uh, Brockport should have snuck in there. Yeah. Um, uh, the 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 Miak Mayak, however you say that, is two for two left with, and now they're playing each other, uh, Gustavus and Saint Olaf. Uh, the Skak is one of one with Saint Thomas still alive. Mac Freedom is one of one with Stevens. Landmark, one of two with Catholic uh, still left. <coughs> uh, the Centennial has one of three left. OAC, uh, one of two. Uh, the ODAC, one of two. The NCAC, one of two. And the C2C, one of three. I always got to remember that Platteville's in that conference um so there's 12 12 conferences represented still left and the only ones with multiple teams left are the nescac sunyak and the miak yeah uh, now quickly on the unbeatens and the one loss two losses we've only got two unbeatens left which is chicago and stevens yep Oh, and I'm going to ask you, so there's seven, don't look at your notes, I'm not. there's seven teams with one loss, uh -huh. and I'm going to tell you six of them, and you tell me who the seventh one is. With one loss? Yes. One loss. Okay. So, St. Thomas. Okay. Gustavus Adolphus. Okay. Johns Hopkins. Okay. Amherst. Don't look at your notes. I'm, Bowden, I'm cheating. Okay. And Kenyon. And who's the seventh one? Mount Union? No, they're not in. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what if I said I'm pulling it out of a... What if I said Mary Washington? That would be wrong. Wait, I'm, would it be Ohio Ohio Northern? No. Okay, then I have no idea. I, you right. can tell I didn't I'll give cheat. you one more hint. Okay. It's the team that has 11 ties. Williams. Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. 11 ties. Yep. Seven. Does that count the Messiah game? Um... Or are you or are you just counting that logically as a victory? No, that counts. That counts. Yeah. That's the eleven. That they went from ten to eleven on that game. Yeah. On the ties. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, 
What no. do we know the? Did you don't happen to know what the scores were, right? Like what what was sort of the average number of goals they they tied at? Um, I don't think I don't anything know, I, was, don't know. I don't think anything was high scoring. No, there were they were there were zero zeros. There were one mm-hmm. ones, and then there were maybe two two twos. Yeah. That's pretty remarkable like in its own right. Like, forget... Right. Right. Yeah. You know, 11 times. Like, yeah. Dude, they've kissed their sister a lot of times this, this season, right? So I... Um, I... Yeah, so I don't know... Well, I, I don't want to get too far down the, the, the Williams Messiah thing, but I, I do want to share the... Um, you know, I think we should have ante- not not anticipated that they would have, you know, that Messiah wouldn't have advanced because I definitely expected Messiah to advance. <clears throat> but when you look at all those people Williams tied with, which includes all the top teams in the NESCAC, it's, yeah. it's not a su- it's not a surprise that they hung around. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think I emailed you and said i got a funny feeling, feeling about, about this. you do i looked at the email today and i yeah. got angry but um because i wish you didn't have that feeling um well no but that... it's true it's very true like you, you right. did say I, that i didn't trust the feeling because i had a vested interest in you know what if like williams <laughs> knocked them off yeah. like kenyon actually <laughs> first of all messiah would be out yeah and then i could start worrying about Williams and yeah. Washington Lee and <coughs> Ohio Northern, but I also realized, you know, there's a good chance Kenyon will host now. Yeah. If that happened. But the thing I wanted to share about that note to you that I had a funny feeling, I have to give full credit to um, our Tufts friend, D4 Pace, who yeah. I don't know if you remember but this, but it was almost like a throwaway post. Um, but somebody asked him a question, and then he said, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Williams beat Messiah 1-0. I did not see and that. And I think that, the fact yeah. that he thought that that was, like, possible, yeah, even a little bit of a possibility, mm. kind of put the idea in my head. So all, all credit to D4 Pace. Dr. About to be Dr. D4 from Tufts. I am, uh, I, having watched the game, I don't think it was only Williams. I, 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 my thinking is always with a team like Messiah, if you're going to get anything out of them, you have to catch them on a day where they are just not right and that they're not, they don't play to what, to the level that they've shown day in and day out, right? Like that, that we've mm-hmm. seen throughout the season. Look, you could, whatever, the, the game itself against Williams. But that's the one game that I watched all season where they were just not at 100% for whatever the reasons were. And some of it was Williams, but I think it was just that they, they struggled themselves to do the things they normally do. And I think that's you- the only way that a team... Even Williams would have done damage yeah. to them, because I think if they're firing on cylinder on all cylinders, I don't think Williams touches them. Do you think they weren't quite ready, or they took Williams? I don't know. I don't like... know. Um, I do think they did a great job with Luke Brodigan, uh, the the center midfielder, who I think is probably in my book is the player of the year. Like that kid is uh-huh. so special, um, because they didn't give him time. They didn't let him sort of dictate the pace in the midfield they had a guy shadow him once he got like 40 yards in he was never alone never are you talking about Brodigan or Grudoff oh Grudoff I'm sorry I'm sorry yeah Yeah. um um he just just um did not did not yeah once inside the 40 he was not let alone and that hurts I think I think because he's a lot he does a lot of the the combination play in the middle and gets right. them going. 
Um, but yeah, I just I wonder don't if think... he was. I wonder if he was maybe a, almost too unselfish. Yeah, I, I don't know. He and and then like I said, they just couldn't. They said the wind was a really big factor for them, but you right. know, they, Williams was dealing with it too. So, uh, but they just didn't but look I, I like think... comfortable. They just didn't look comfortable. And, and this is where the tough guy influenced me. I, I, I mean, I definitely thought Messiah would win, and yeah. I probably thought they would even win fairly easily. But I'm the one thing I did know is that Williams would not be intimidated. Yeah. Or, and I think so many teams play Messiah, and they're oh, almost they're, defeated. They're, they you lose know. before they even start, right? Right, right, because yeah. the reputation is yeah. just so enormous. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're playing on that famous yeah. Yeah. field at Shoemaker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's, you know. Yeah. So anyway. Um, do you want me to throw up the bracket, or do you have something else you want to cover? Yeah, I just um, yeah throw them on up. I I just wanted to mention the teams and see what you think. The the teams that I thought that had the potential to reach the final four or win the whole thing, but mm-hmm. that didn't make it <coughs> are obvious. Are Messiah? This is my uh, Messiah Calvin. Maybe North Park and maybe Middlebury. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so I, I think I think Middlebury, right? I'm, this is terrible. They're gonna hate me, and I I don't mean this in a bad way. But Middlebury seemed to revert back to mean to me, right? Like they they overperformed, maybe they outperformed, and then they get to the tournament, and then they underperformed. Um, Calvin, I was very very disappointed in their game. Um, I, this the. Four nothing? Was it four? Five. It was no, it was four, yeah. but then you know, they also went down two men two after men, yeah. after three. Like, but so. they didn't even look good. Like, you know, they, it wasn't like it was competitive. I thought Kenyon played really well, but I, I didn't I was surprised. I expected them to come out a little bit better, but not even close. I knew like yeah, within you, the first fifteen, twenty minutes, I was like, This game is not gonna Go well for Calvin. Yeah, Kenyon looked well. We'll come back to that, but I mean, Kenyon, I thought looked fantastic yeah. against Greenville, and then and then Calvin played Carnegie Mellon, and yeah. it looked like, oh my God, there's no way Kenyon's going to beat Calvin. Yeah, and I was like, and you and everybody else was like, oh my God, Calvin just looks so good. Yeah, um, so, that's what yeah. I was. Maybe that was my expectation, um, and then. Well, obviously Messiah, right? We we mentioned that, and then oh, North Park. North Park's another one that I was just like, hate to say it, if, and I like no, I like Ohio Northern. I'm a I'm a fan, right? Like I'm, I think they they've had a remarkable season and and all of that, but like I, I ex, if, if I think they there were enough red flags through the season where I. I think a number of us should have been like, yeah, maybe just like the Will- the Williams Messiah game where we should have been like, yeah, maybe Messiah might take, you know, maybe Nor- uh, Williams might take Messiah to the ropes, right? Like we should have had the same thought about North Park just because of some of the performances through the season. Because yeah. losing the Nor- to Ohio Northern, I don't, I don't think they, I didn't think they would. I don't think they should have. Right. And I like right. Ohio Northern again. I'm not dismissing them. I think they're a good team, and I think they could, um, you know, they 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 could they could give uh, Williams a little bit of a of a headache. So who Ohio Northern? Oh. Um... Oh yeah, I forgot that's who they're playing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's. Yeah, well, if you want to, yeah, yeah. why don't we just start start there? Okay. Um, um, yeah, I think that's a. 
I was actually surprised how many goals Ohio Northern mm. has given up because I sort of think of them as more of a defensively oriented mm. team. Mm. Um, but, you know, I think the matchups, and you can't really tell until they start playing, but I, I, you know, Ohio Northern might cause Williams some problems because Williams wants teams to come at them and then yeah. they can kind of do yeah, their yeah. mid-block and, and, and counter. And then counter, yep. No. Yeah, like who who's gonna set the agenda there? Yeah, um, I, so I think Ohio might, Northern. I like I think Ohio Northern has the capacity to. I think here's the thing. Yeah. I think I think they're they're good enough where they don't fall for the the Williams trap, right? Which is come at us, and then as soon as we win it, we're going gangbusters. I don't. I don't think Ohio Northern. I don't think is going to get caught into that trap. I think they're going to be a lot more thoughtful and methodical about getting forward. Mm-hmm. Now the question is, can can Ohio Northern? I think in this game again, Ohio Northern has to mm-hmm. score. Like they can't two zero. It, they they can't go to PKs again. I I just don't. I don't. I don't see. I don't. I don't see them. I don't see the game going to PKs. Believe it or not, but they can't. They can't. I don't think Ohio Northern can afford to go to PKs. Yeah, I. My gut tells me Williams is going to get through that one. But if Ohio Northern can get a get a lead, and have Williams sort of chasing the game exactly. And, um, That's then the whole game plan changes on Williams, and I don't think they're right. Good at but I mean, but but you know, is Ohio Northern has they have they even scored yet in the two games? Did they score the the first game? Maybe was one they they tied won one. one one. They won in penalties. They beat North Park on penalties, but they didn't right. score. And now this right. one. So they've scored one goal in two games. Two games, yeah. <coughs> um. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, and then, and then the other one, which I, <laughs> this is funny, I bet my, um, you know, my inbox has just been inundated from, <laughs> from uh, Washington and Lee Nation <laughs> asking me to share my thoughts or like whatever. Everybody, then, Washington and Lee Nation, who hasn't emailed already, already you'll see down below uh, <laughs> uh, Paul Newman's email address. Feel free. No, He's no, always no, welcoming. No, no. <laughs> so when I, when I say my inbox was flooded, I actually mean there was one. <laughs> but it was a long one. <laughs> Right. And so, you know, obviously I'm not going <coughs> to offer a prediction on this one, but I, I am, you know, I do think, I do think, I thought this about the Calvin game too, but I think it'll be a phenomenal game. I think these are two programs that were sort of, without knowing it, kind of on a collision course to mm-hmm. meet at some point these past two years. Yeah. They could have met last year if Kenyon had won that Messiah game they should have won, but, um, you know, two programs that are very similar in terms of the timing of when they've kind of come on the rise, Um, you know, very similar trajectories. I think Kenyon's actually has been longer, but Mm -hmm. WNL broke through to the Final Four faster, so... um, you know, both with a lot of uh, offensive firepower, good defense. Um, I think it, you know, just like I thought with Calvin, I think it could be one of the better games in the in the whole tournament. Um, and, you know, both um, extremely well coached, you know, both took over programs and mm-hmm. took them to the next, a, a whole other level. Um, so it's, you know, except for the anxiety of someone who's interested so much in the outcome, I think it's, uh, would be a great game for neutrals to watch. This one's tough for me to call. Cause I think both teams throughout the season 
had good moments, bad moments, and didn't necessarily reach the level that I thought they could have. Um, although I will say if neither team is excited for the position they're in, knowing that if they win that game, I think if they face Williams or was it Williams or Ohio Northern, right? Yep. Like they got to be feeling good about that matchup. So that, that puts them into the semis. So, um, I don't know. I, no, this it's, is it's a hard one. This is a hard one. It's definitely a big game, and mm -hmm. I think, you know, because of because of all the overreactions about that game the very first day of the yeah. season yeah. with Washington Lee and Messiah, yeah. that people kind of put them on the back burner. But, yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean, Washington Lee's lost two games all year, yeah. and one of them was that very first, first game. First game, yeah, yeah. And the other one was a ridiculous game that they lost to Guilford. Oh, and yeah, they yeah. Played the and they shot like they 25 times again and to beat three, them 7 to nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they really, in my opinion, lost one game. Yeah, one game, yeah, yeah. And that was opening day. So, um, yeah. I, I, this one's tough. They both let, – let's – the the one team that doesn't show up ready to play is the one that's going to lose. I know that's 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 going off on a limb, but right. like both, if they want a chance, they're going to have to. Either team is both teams are going to have to show up, or one of them's just they're just going to have to show up and, yeah. and be ready to I, play. I think both of them are going to show up. Yeah. Um, and if that's the case, I, mean, I, I can't. I, have I no can't. Idea. I can't picture Kenyon not showing up for that game. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, and Washington Lee started the season with like, we got to win the national championship. So yeah. I, I think it's a, you know, potential for an in instant classic. Yeah. This could be the final. Yeah, I, I, thought, that, I thought that two days ago with Calvin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I really, you know, I think this could be the final. All right, where where, which, where where do you want to go next? Um, let's go back up to the top. Chicago, St. Thomas. Okay. Let's stay um, on that side. Yeah, some of these that we hardly ever talk about much, maybe I'll share. I, I did all kinds of research about names of players uh -huh. and how many goals and assists, but I, I don't... Um, I think that's just too much to get get into with all these teams. Um, St. Thomas, Chicago, sort of similar to what I said about Williams and Ohio Northern. Like it's a the. I think, I, I mean, listen, I I could see Chicago beating St. Thomas five nothing, but mm -hmm. I think, I think the Chicago style may keep St. Thomas in the game. Yeah. And. St. Thomas has got some real offensive firepower. Like, I could see them s sneaking a goal. Um, and then if, if, if Chicago has to, you know, if they're down and I think they have, the, they, can, they have the talent to turn the offense on if they absolutely have to. Um, but the style, you know, and then, you know, it's, can Chicago, I, I actually think Chicago, if I was coaching, should come out and try to blitz St. Thomas and try to break their spirit. Yeah. Um, I was like actually the, thinking the same thing, right? Because they defend really well as a team, St. Thomas. Yeah. And I thought, if I was, if I was in, in, um, in Coach Sitch's shoes, I would uh, – I would go out and I'd be like root one the ball and go after it wherever it is on the field and see yeah. how they react. Because I I don't I don't know if they would if they've ever seen that level of intensity especially coming from Chicago, right? Like Well, like, and, and and some of those offensive players for Chicago are like super super, super talented. talented. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
and so the, I, and their winger, their le- was it their left wing? That kid's special. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would, I would, I would totally do that at least for the first twenty minutes and see if you can't just because once if Chicago gets the goal first, I just you know that's a that's a tough turnaround. That is a tough turnaround. I just yeah, I, I would say if I would say if Chicago goes up two nothing, it's over. It's over. But I yeah. I don't think Chicago wants it to be a tie game or no. even just up one goal in like yep. the seventy fifth or eightieth minute. No, they could like they bend gets... a lot. You know, like you ever watch like there are moments in games where teams can go at them and Alexa stop. <laughs> Is that your girlfriend? No. <laughs> um, um, like, they're very... They don't necessarily stop you defensively. They just sort of keep you on the perimeters, make it... But they still give opportunity to score. Um... And I think a team like St. Thomas, I, I I actually wouldn't. I, I could see I could see this game St. Thomas shocking Chicago, or maybe it's sort of wishful thinking because Williams shocked Messiah. But, um, yeah, you know. It, well, they've got to be. I mean, they've got to be just. Ex- I mean, they've got to be flying so yeah, high. high I mean, yeah. that, it's their first NCAA tournament. Yeah. And they're in the Sweet 16. Yeah. Um, and then the other half of that, you know, we on the East Coast, we don't think about these teams much, but I think this is like a really gritty. This will be a great, this will be a great Midwestern game. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. they've, they're both, they, Gustavus won the first one, and then St. Yeah. Olaf won the second yeah. one when Gustavus was a man down for 33 minutes. Yeah. Um, I think this is a brawl. I, I think St. I don't know if they like each other much. You know, it's like one of those. I, I, like, I'm sure they don't. Um, I think St. Olaf. I mean, and I listen. I don't know enough about either one of them, truthfully, but. I think St. Olaf is probably a little bit more talented, but yeah. Gustavus is tough as nails. Yeah. They've only lost one game. game. <laughs> and that was to St. Olaf. But, yeah. um, right. And then I'm a little biased because I think if St. Olaf wins, they would have a real shot against Chicago. Um, I could see that. I could. I could. I could yeah. They have the definitely have the firepower, but I think they might bring a a little bit of a a physicality to Chicago that I don't know if they have. I'm trying to think, how many teams have they gotten into like physical battles with? Who's Saint Olaf? No, Chicago. Oh, uh, oh! You just reminded me. Um, cause I had forgotten this when I was looking through stuff, you know, they actually played like the second or third game of the season and Chicago won two to one, but it was one, one for a long time. Oh. The stats, the, the stats were pretty even or even shaded towards yeah. St. Olaf. Um, so, you know, they, St. Olaf knows it's not like they're going in cold, cold. and don't yeah, think they yeah. can play with Chicago. Yeah. And I, I probably get a little, a little, little bit of weight to this. You know, the Saint Olaf coach is obviously a Ohio Wesleyan legend. Yeah. Uh, Two thousand eleven National Player, Player of the, the Year, year. Yeah. Final Four MVP, Travis yeah. Wall. Um. So. Um, that would be a heck of a game. Like right there, Chicago, St. Olaf. Where I, I get yeah. we're way ahead of it, but but that would well, be... Well, yeah, and Gus, Gustavus is going to have a lot to say, say about, about it. And this, yeah. this just went up on their bulletin board. <laughs> yeah. It's Paul Newman, P-A-U-L-N-E-W-M-A-N. <laughs> and by the way, their website is 
unless I just couldn't figure it was I could not nap you couldn't find the roster or the you can't you get a main page and then there's no links to anything for who for Gustavus at office I, I think that's so, tactical they're like big game <laughs> <laughs> big game let's make it difficult <laughs> let's uh, well, it, it was all the, difficult. All the, I almost all the videos, all, all the schedule, like it's all blanked out. Like all the videos are gone. I'm, I'm sure. Right, I, I couldn't find who their top goal scorers no, were. No, like, I, I had to go like third level research <laughs> and get the conference first team it's, it's list. All, it's all see. mass data. It's all gibberish and and signed. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I, I, I still think Chicago got the best draw out of yeah, all the top yeah, seeds, yeah. but I, I, I do think that they, um, you know, and maybe it's because they had a little bit of a hard time with Birmingham Southern, but... Um, they didn't look good in that first half, blow, did they? Right, they're not going to blow out a lot no, of teams, so, no. you know. I don't think they're designed for that, you know? Like, I actually think, yeah, they beat, what, Birmingham... T- uh, Oh, they beat Willamette. Willamette? Williamette. Willamette. Will Willamette? Yeah. Is that the way it's You said? and I both are. Oh, we're on the bulletin board for next year. They can't even yeah. pronounce our name correctly. Um, like 4 1, that's an anomaly for Chicago. Chicago's like the 1 2, and they that's it. That's their, that's their output. Yeah. Almost like a better version of Johns Hopkins, although Johns Hopkins. Really did a number on, uh, but anyhow. And there's a lot of pressure on them now. I mean, with Messiah yeah. out, it's like yeah. okay, Chicago. It's, it's ours to lose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right. On 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 what blackboard do we go on next? Uh, you t- you pick one. Now uh, we'll just scroll down. So. All right, let's go. Let's start on the left side. Stevens, SUNY, Cortland. I'm actually, I think I will be live streaming from these games because they're at Stevens. I might go. Oh, so you're not going to drive to Gambier? I thought about it, but I thought you were taking that road trip and I was, you know, because we split workloads here. Yeah. Um, I thought about I would go to the Stevens one. You don't yeah, want to. I'd you don't to. want to drive in Hoboken anyhow. It's like that's kind of rough. <laughs> now to go to Gambier, I'd have to fly to Pittsburgh and rent a car, yeah, and then yeah. it's a three-hour. It's a three-hour drive from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Not doing it. Um, um, I don't. I don't think I'm doing that. <laughs> uh. Um. So Stephen Suny Cortland, and I let me. Can I just? Is this the game? Yes, this is the game. I said, and you said there's no way, or you made some f- flippant remark about how me being so wrong that on no place on earth would it be possible that Rowan would beat Middlebury. <laughs> did I say that? Yes, you did. <laughs> you did. So, like, not on any planet, or something to that. I thought it was this game. Not on any planet would Rowan beat Middlebury. Uh... I, I mean... I might have to go back and clip it, and we'll put it in the show when this goes. No, down. oh, actually, that's a good. You're wrong, but it's close because I said there's no way Oneonta will beat Tufts. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's just as good. <laughs> right, but I, I was wrong, but I was right. <laughs> right, and, and I. I thought Middlebury Rowan was a toss up, but I thought Middlebury would be too disciplined for yeah, Rowan. Yeah. Um, the street brawl broke out. So, and then you know, and just I think Rowan got a little bit. I don't know if screwed is too strong here, but you know, it looked like they were going to beat Stevens. Yeah, I think they. It wasn't until the what <coughs> in the last. I don't want to say ten minutes, five minutes that they that Stevens equalized. Yeah, it seemed like I didn't watch it carefully enough, but it seemed like some people thought maybe there was a call that wasn't there like a goal, a ball on the line that oh that went, went off the crossbar, yeah, yeah, 
But I don't know. Nobody seem if I remember it. Nobody seemed to like call that. You know, like usually you see the team jumping around. Goal, goal. Yeah. There was none of that really. Like they just kept playing. So, so I don't know. Yeah. Like you couldn't really tell from my from the computer. Yeah. But so you're really avoiding the Stevens Cortland game. No, I'm gonna go. I. I have to say, this is going to, my, so I have a, a dear friend whose son, a magnificent ball player, plays on Stevens and actually gets minutes and scores goals and whatnot. So I, I a shout out to, to him, but I got to say, what Cortland did against Franklin and Marshall was pretty impressive. And I'm wondering if they don't if they're not riding high and go into Stevens and take it to Stevens. I didn't I didn't watch that game, but wasn't Cortland down two nothing? Two nothing. Two nothing. Came back and and went took it to PK's three three. Yeah. And it was like night and day, right? Just and I think they got that. And I do think they have the talent, obviously. They wouldn't be here if they weren't. Although... No, they've, they've, just, they've been so all over the map. Exactly. I mean, they, this is another opening day yeah. game where they lost to Rochester 3-1. It's yeah. like, wow. Yeah. Um, and then they beat Brockport, and then they lost to Brockport. Brockport yep. Um, and then they lost to, to St. Lawrence. Yeah. Right, a 2 so one they, wasn't it 2 one I thought, yeah. Uh, yes, they lost to Oneonta, 3-0. So, I mean, they're very, but they definitely have the firepower. I just don't know if they can keep, um, like, they're not going to score three goals on Stevens. No, I don't think so. Right? No. It would have to but, be a one or two goal. But is is Stevens capable of scoring two? And you know, in Cortland, they've they've got fifty nine goals and they've given up thirty three. Yeah. Um. So I. I was gonna say the the part where Stevens has the advantage is that they're playing at Stevens on turf, but Cortland play beat. You know, took it to Franklin yeah. and Marshall, then they played on turf. So I guess it's not much of an advantage. It's, I don't it's think. Good... I think, first of all, I do think. I, ultimately, between these, I think whoever ends up controlling the ball better. If it gets into a shooting match, I, I'm gonna. If it gets into like you know the ping pong popcorn ga- kind of game, yeah. I'm gonna give it to Stevens. If 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 Cortland can get the ball under control, sort of dictate the pace, and have Stevens chase a little bit more than what they're accustomed to, I think. I think uh, I think Cortland can take it, but I do think that they need to. I think they have to need, own the midfield, and that's going to be hard because of what's his name. Um, he just won the Mac, not Freedom. Is it the Mac Freedom? Yeah, um, player of the what, year. What the play, uh, Silva? Yeah, he is good. He's a player. Uh, yeah, they got Silver, Bruno Andino, yep. Sean Mazur. Um, but they don't, they do not score a lot. So um, mm-hmm. I think it's another interesting contrast. Yeah. I, you know, I think Stevens has to like how their position, like, again, I thought they would have a hard time if they played Middlebury, but, and I think at the bottom, I think they could have a really hard time with Johns Hopkins. Oh, totally. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think... I mean, I, Johns Hopkins, I think, is sort of getting it together at the right time. Yep. Yeah. Um, I was really impressed with them, that the 
the game. Um, what, who did they? What did they play? Um, John Carroll. John Carroll. I was super impressed by them in yeah. that game. That's actually influencing me a little bit about Ohio Northern because I kind of tend to think of, of Ohio Northern yeah. and John Carroll as similar. And yeah. I was that I was really shocked that John. It looked like John Carroll didn't really show up, and that is not like them. Yeah. So I, I will say this: the one of the first videos I did was speaking with Coach Appleby about. The snowball, right? Last year at John Carroll, they're playing in the snow. I think they, they're they at 1-1, and it just starts to really snow, and then they, whatever, they lose, 2-1. And, and he said, he's like, the only, in, in the inter interviews, right? It's not, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not for on the board, but... Uh, you know, he said, he's like, I would be curious to know how we would have done. I think we could have beaten them if the weather had held out, right? And we played on a on a good surface. Yeah. And then, sure enough, I mean, just against John Carroll, they made him look pedestrian, you know? Like, they just didn't look like they – John Carroll had the – they were chasing right. that game from minute one. And John Hopkins it was just very, was so um, good. It was almost disorienting to me because I had I had just watched Johns Hopkins yeah. struggle like incredibly with Muhlenberg. Muhlenberg, yeah, yeah. And like John Carroll is a better team than Muhlenberg, Muhlenberg yeah, by a lot. <laughs> um, and they made John Carroll look the way that I thought Muhlenberg would have looked. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but. You know, then there's your Catholic squad. You know, um, just kind of hanging in there, like you know, nothing totally outstanding, but nothing really weak. I mean, you know, they've only lost like like who? Let me see who they lost to. Um, you probably Mary, know you, uh, Mary Washington. They're not really my squad, but. They lost to Mary, they lost to Eastern Mary Washington and Scranton. And Scranton, yeah, won nothing in the in the tournament. Um, but they beat uh, you know I mean they had yeah. one of the better weekends of a lot of like they yeah. just beat Lynchburg and Christopher Newport. Yeah. And you know I didn't have a lot of trust in either one of those teams, but those are very solid yeah. teams. Um, those are those I. They, they up until this game, up until the game they play against Johns Hopkins, and I mean this in a respectful way, obviously. But to me, I, I always think of Lynchburg and I think of Christopher Newport, as I do think of Catholic this way, as their conference teams, right? Like they're built and designed to be hyper competitive and to win their conference, and they're their sights don't go very far beyond that. Whereas I look at Amherst or I look at Washington and Lee, I look at Messiah. The conference is mm -hmm. nice, but they're looking at, okay, our ultimate objective is national championship. And I think they build themselves to that objective. Right. And I will say this about Catholic, which is why I think they're going to struggle against Johns Hopkins. When a soccer game breaks out against Catholic, Catholic struggles. So what do I mean by a soccer game? When a team possesses the ball, knocks it around, is very patient, makes them chase, and just picks them apart. They're, they're not strong defensively, positionally that way. And I think that's where Johns Hopkins thrives, right? Where you lose to Johns Hopkins is if you... you Take, you just throw that out and you just sort of go toe to toe and you just start chasing the game back and forth the way um, Catholic loves to do. Just counterattack on speed, get forward, get numbers forward, and create as much chaos as you can in the box. And it's effective. Mm -hmm. It's like Amherst, right? Like, I don't like to watch it, but it's really effective. And, but I think Hopkins is too disciplined and likes the ball too much to to yeah. get caught in that game. 
Well, I, the one thing that surprised me looking at some of the stats on Catholic, because I, I know there's one player you guys, some of you I'm guys really love. Um, Darius Siapush. I can't pronounce his name. Yeah, Darius Siapush, number seven. He's their most talented yes. by far, yes. country he, mile. He was the offensive player of the year in yep. the landmark. Yep. But the thing that surprised me is they have a couple of other players that, like they this Gordy Burnmore Burn has yeah. 11 goals and four assists. Oh, yep. And then Dominic Caltibiano has yeah. eight goals and ten assists. Yeah. Um, so they've got several players who yeah. have put up some numbers. Yeah. The the um, the second one, Gordy Burnlaw, he's like their left wing. He's a bit of a hammer, you know, like everything's a nail to him. And he loves that, hey, I'm going to cut the ball to my right and hit it far post. That's like his yeah. his trick. The the Dominic uh, whatever Caltel Biano, um, he's actually not bad. He's probably I don't want to say he's creative, but he's a, he's good with the ball and yeah, he can he can hit a ball from range. And I think that's he's been fine in the back of the goal that way. That's a great name. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then their their star sophomore center back Owen Mayer Ma- yeah. Maher, number six. He wears glasses in the team picture. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, nighttime, he doesn't do so, night games, he doesn't do so well if you look at the stats. That's, <laughs> that's the kind of quality insight you can only get on the new show. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we're, like in, we're like those investigative journalists, man. Like, we're... <laughs> yeah. Um... So you're feeling pretty good about John's hot. So yeah. So I let's say, uh, let's say hypothetically, we get a Stevens Johns Hopkins Elite Eight game. At that, good gracious, that's a tough one too. I, I don't know. I was that impressed. I would. I was that impressed with with their performance against John Carroll. I'm starting to think like they 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 might have a formula. They might be mm-hmm. on. They might have a formula, and I would I would pick Johns Hopkins, which again to as, my as friend, well. and to my to to the to the attacking midfielder on Stevens, who my, my yeah. simple player number one played with for years, and we go way back. I apologize, but yeah. I, I, um, maybe so I true, shouldn't. Uh, maybe, goal, maybe we should. Maybe we should just keep talking about this stuff, and then I just won't post the video <laughs> because I feel like <laughs> I've gotten in trouble like four or five uh, times already. Like, oh my gosh! Um, since you're the GK expert, what do you make of Johns Hopkins switching out their Division One graduate school goal goalkeeper with? a different goalkeeper for the PKs. Yeah. It's like the Conne- like the Connecticut, Connecticut College, College strategy. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um I don't I don't think that's a that doesn't bother me okay. for PKs. Where I start to say like you have a problem in goal is when you see teams like switch during like a game unless there's hurt, right? Like but right. And, and you know, like, hey, halftime, we're gonna switch our goalies. Why would you do that? You don't, you know, you just don't do that. You usually, to me, you settle on a one, right? Like, okay, you're gonna play the, or you do the, oh, you play the conference games, you play out of conference. That's one thing, but mm-hmm. never. That means you have a problem in my book. But that's me, old school. All right. We're, we have one left? We have two left. We have Oneonta and then, yeah, Oneonta, Bowden. Let's do them. This we, is the Amherst group, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the last one. So, um, Oneonta, well, you know, I have to eat my hat, so to speak. I mean, <laughs> and, here, you, here you go. You want this one? 
And I, I should have known better because <laughs> the Oneonta coach, like Ian Byrne, is like a legend. Yeah. And they they actually have been. I just rechecked this tonight. He's he's gotten them to four Final Fours in the last, like since two thousand eleven. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, I didn't know that. Let me. I think the last one was in two thousand fifteen. Like he had um, two thousand. No, he's been to. Th- Three maybe, 2011, 2014, 2015. Hmm. Um, and they sort of had a mid-season slump where they lost to Geneseo, they tied Potsdam, and yeah. then they lost to Brockport. Because I dropped. They haven't like lost a... since October eighth. Yeah, I remember that stretch because um, I dropped them like a hot potato from the rankings. Right, all of us like. Yeah. Oh, I, I finally remember. put them up there, and then they. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you can't mess around with Lucas Fetchy and freshman rookie, Sunyak rookie of the year, Milton Mancius Magana. Um, Lucas Fetchy was the Sunyak offensive player of the year two yeah. years in a row. Wow. Um, and then they got some other, they got some other studs too. So, I mean, I'm, I know this wasn't, your grandfather's Tufts team, but um, I, I'm impressed that they handled Tufts like yeah. that. I th- and um, I thought Tufts played relatively well, and I thought, but yes. I thought Oneonta handled them well, right? Like, right. You can those two can be can be the case, and I and I thought right. Tufts just had a hard time getting getting clear looks to goal, you know, like. It wasn't so simple. Once they got past that 40-yard line, 35-yard line, it just got really hard for them. And then you saw guys, yeah. like, dribbling from midfield, Tufts players dribbling from midfield, like trying to weave themselves to the 18 and take a shot. And that's when I knew that they were done. Like, you can't – that's easy pickings, you know, defensively. Right, and the, the Tufts guy I was mentioning earlier, I mean, he said that that was Tufts – the first half was their best half, half of the season. season. Yeah. And they were down one nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um so Oneonta Of course the problem is is now they're playing Bowden, who I um I I think I think maybe Bowden is the most overlooked, really good team in the field. Like I don't think they're going to be easy to beat at all. Um, I watched so. some of the game against Vassar, and they—they, they, I thought they took it. I took it to Vassar, like a lot of the game, a lot of the stretch. Like Vassar was yeah. always starting deep in their half, trying to get the ball forward because they were always either pressing really high or. Or getting on the attack, I was I was somewhat impressed. I I was surprised that Vassar ended up tying it up and right. And you, know. you have to be able to advance on a game or two like that. Yeah. And yep. You know they've got um, like Dylan Reed, their center back, who was the NESCAC Player of the Year, mm-hmm. and then they got that Juan Torina kid. Yeah, who, yeah, he's really good. I he's like, like him. a beast in the middle of the yep. park. Um. That they've got some, and, and I think they are sort of a counter kind of like. I think they may let Oneana come at them and then, yeah. um, and just slap them. You know what I mean? Like, yep, you're gonna you're gonna come and attack us, and as soon as you lose the ball, yeah. we are gonna go. We're gonna go so fast. You're gonna your head's right. gonna be spinning. Now I, I could be wrong, and Oneana's gonna beat them two nothing. But I, I think Bowden is sort of what I thought Middlebury was, was gonna, gonna be. be. Yeah. I'm actually and, going with Bowden here. I know shocker. Huh. Yeah, that is a shocker. Yeah, um, but I, I think, he, and I'm happy about this. Not not because I don't like them, but just I don't like it when it's too easy for a team to get to the final four. But yeah. I think either one of them can play with Amherst, and they won't be like Bowden no, knows yeah. Amherst. Yeah, so Bowden won't be. You know, they won't have a learning curve at all. And I actually don't think Oneonta will have that much of a learning mm-hmm. curve either. 
Um, so obviously that game would be on the Amherst field. <coughs> Look, um, they but took I, care I don't think that's Oneonta, a no. Oneonta is going to be like, we just played toughs if they make it through Bowden. We just you played know what? Toughs. That's what I was thinking. Like, yep, we that was perfect. Pre- if yep. they do get by Bowden, playing yeah. toughs and Bowden back to back is like, that's what the doctor would order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you, if you, <laughs> yeah, you know, you either deal with it and win and come through, or you're dead and you go home. You know, yeah. <laughs> like it's, that's your option. And they dealt with it, right? Two nothing against Tufts is no small, small right. shake. Right. right. So, I, I, so that I think that's a big game. I think either one of them could get to the final four. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm assuming you're. Do you give Mary Washington even a puncher's chance against Amherst? Aren't they at? They are at Amherst, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, forget it. Do you know much about Mary Washington? I watched them a couple times. I watched them the game against Catholic where they won, and they. I think they came from behind. I. I don't know. I can't remember if it was three two or three one yeah. or something like that. But I watched the game where nobody scored, and then they scored twice in seventeen seconds at the end of the game. Did you see that? <laughs> no. No, it was 0-0, zero, zero, and it was in the C to C fight conference final. Mary Washington scored with 17 seconds left. Everybody went crazy. And then Christopher Newport came off the kickoff. It was almost like the Owu Kenyon thing. Like they scored with two seconds left to tie it up. Oh my oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then uh now I can't remember if it went to PK. I think maybe it went to PKs, PKs. and Mary Washington, Washington prevailed. Yeah. Um, um, I just don't. I listen. I so here's what's interesting. I watched the what was the what was the game? Oh, it's not up here. It's for some reason it's not showing. Um, what was the game Amherst played on the turf? Um, you mean in the turn, uh, the, yeah. the first game, the first day they played on the turf and then the next day they played on the grass. Yeah. That was, um, I don't have it. New England college, maybe New England or, college. And no, I, that was only oh. maybe, um, yeah. um, they played Husson, Husson, Husson. Yeah. Husson. They didn't look right. as comfortable playing on a turf field, a big turf field, right? And and if if I was gonna, I hate to say this again, another, I'm gonna, we're gonna get in trouble. We're gonna get two emails this week <laughs> instead of one. <laughs> um, yeah, like if if they if they were to say oh the Amherst Mary Washington game is going to be played on that their turf field you know what maybe i could sit there and be like well then mary washington has a chance they're going to be able to play a little bit cuz i think they do like to play and possess the ball but they're playing yeah. on that grass field again and i just i think that just suits amherst just fine yeah, and they're gonna they'll have like four guys on forward. Josh Kirkland, yeah. who was the C to C player, player of the year, year for the second right. straight year, and they're gonna you know, I know, uh, and more cat is gonna be upset, you know, out in Australia, but you know, and they're just gonna beat the living daylights out of Mary Washington, you know, every time they get the ball, there's gonna be a foul. <laughs> like forget it, I'm off the boards. We're done. This isn't going live. <laughs> no, do you have an opinion though about the referees and like do they just is it fatigue? Like, I don't, that's a great question. And I and I you know I I posted something where I said I know of refs and this again I don't know if it, the assignments assigning has changed and it could have been but you know back when I was coaching. Like there were, there was a vested interest in some referees to make sure that they stayed in the good graces of the home coach because they liked yeah. refing there because it oh, was yeah, close to home that. or, 
And I'm not saying, I'm not making that suggestion in Amherst's case. Like, sometimes that's, there is a, there is a piece of that, right? Um, I will yeah, say, too. Yeah, my theory too, is more, my theory is more fatigue. Like, if, like, like Amherst, within the first two minutes of the game, when a foul gets caught on them, they act the way other teams like St. Thomas act when it's like the other 15. team was given a PK. Yeah. And everybody jumps up in the referee's well, face and well, they do that all the on time. Every single call. Even throw ins. Even throw ins I've seen them go up in arms about. Which you you call it foul fatigue. I am I'm, I'm I'm sure there is there is something about when you see a player's reaction to a f- if you as a ref as well that I'm a ref you blow the whistle and hey that's a foul and then the player freaks out like I didn't do anything or what have you it does make you think like did I get that call right and maybe there's some of that that after a while you're like man yeah. I must be having a terrible game but having said that like the sideline stuff that's that that the, the, if I were the ref, like the game would stop, and and that nonsense would be like it's one thing if it's on the field, the other thing on the sideline, that I find is intolerable. Right. I, that's yeah. I don't understand why they don't just stop the game and like yeah. call everybody go over there and bring yeah. the captains over to the coach and say, look, if this doesn't stop right yeah. now, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Um, and I was, um. I was really impressed. Like that game could not have started any worse for St. Lawrence, and oh, I was really I, yeah. They they really hung in there. Like, yeah, I actually thought uh, like even in the second half, I'm like, man, these guys. You know, that's the thing about Am- like again Amherst, the Catholics of the world. To me, it's like those first 15 minutes. Like if you're not awake, you're gonna get. It's gonna be a long day, and. I always, to me, that's the that's the rub against guys like that. If you if you hang for the first twenty minutes, right. like and you, according to the St. Louis uh, St. Lawrence uh, group, they weren't awake because they didn't get any sleep the night before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Holy smokes! Like, uh, but yeah, I, I was I like could not believe like when I turned back and it was four two. two it was yeah. like, yeah. If they had gotten another one, I think yeah. that game would have gotten gotten a little hairy. Yeah. Oh, then, then, then the then the blades come out, right? Like they sharpen their cleats yeah. and then they come out there and looking for, yeah, um, yeah. So I I I, I don't know. I don't. Th- this one I just have to give to, like, just default to Amherst. Although again, another t- it's another team that has not played. I mean. They they've played their last few games. They've played okay. I mean, to Amherst standards, they've played well. But I mean, throughout the season, they've been sort of up and down. So maybe they're down and they play on the turf. And there's a referee who doesn't put up with their nonsense, and Mary Washington comes away with a win. Um. All right. Well, why don't we close? I'm going to give you my. And you can agree or disagree or add or subtract. Okay. But, um, I'm going to give you my three games of the third round. Okay. And I'm going to say Washington Lee Kenyon. I wonder why. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say Oneonta and Bowden. Versus Bowden, and I'm going to say Gustavus versus Saint Olaf. Um, I think those will be the three best, most competitive games. So the one that oof. So I'm tossed between. I think Ohio Northern Williams is going to be a game. I think that's going to. I think that could be a really good game. So the question is, do I? Can I add a four? Like I'll add that one. Yeah. That would be the only. That well, it's your show. Only. 
<laughs> yeah, but you're the star. <laughs> um, yeah, so so that would be the only one. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be a heck of a game. I hope so. I hope they have to play for 240 minutes. Hey, <laughs> you know what you could have done? You know what you could have done? See, if you were a real fan, if you were truly like passionate about Kenyon, you would have drive there and pull the fire alarm. Yeah, that's <laughs> Washington and Lee's fire. Like, hey, four o'clock in the morning, sleeping away, pull the fire alarm. You know, I'm like really. I'm very curious where people stay there because there's the Kenyan Inn and they probably have one team there and they only have like maybe 20, 25 rooms. Yeah. So that like a whole team could fill that up. And then for families and like and the other teams, there's a Holiday Inn Express in Mount Vernon and there's not much else. Like you could stay like in Columbus, I guess. Maybe maybe they um, do those things at some of those schools. They they like they put them up with families. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i i'm just weird now it's late <laughs> yeah um all right mr petru um okay this was awesome this was fantastic yeah, good luck always. to all the players and the families oh, absolutely and... absolutely make it a weekend enjoy it remember it yep you know It'll be good. And so, you know what? I hate to do this to you. We have to do another one. After this round, we're going to have to do another another show. I know that pains you because it could, you know, depending on outcomes. Right. But I'm holding you we'll, to it. We'll, we'll have time to assess that because there'll be, uh, <laughs> there'll be uh, I think there's at least two weeks yeah. gap. So. Yeah. All right. Okay, sorry. All right, brother. Yep. Thanks.